it is finally here, the ultimate camera test. We've got your top five most requested devices and we're gonna settle this once and for all. So welcome to maybe the first five-in-one smartphone camera comparison. We're gonna leave out the OnePlus 5T here just because of how soon its replacement is coming. But yeah, we can always do a follow-up down the line. All right, let's get into it. Starting off with portrait mode. And you'll notice even given the exact same subject in the exact same position, these five images look completely different. The S9 and the P20 Pro focus on making the subject look good, which I'd say for 70 to 80% of the population is actually what we want. Whereas the iPhone 10 and Pixel 2 have a focus on realism, which is not a bad thing either. But throughout these photos, you might have noticed the S9 Plus seems to have the best edge detection, something that wasn't present at launch, but has obviously since been improved. Whilst both Google's Pixel 2 and Sony's Xperia XZ2 have a single camera setup, the Xperia lacks Google's software trickery and therefore doesn't have a portrait mode at all. In terms of video, all these phones shoot in 4K resolution, so in terms of the number of pixels, you aren't going to be able to find a difference. But the S9 Plus, Pixel 2 and P20 Pro produce a much more vibrant image, and they handle the high dynamic range of these situations a little better. Moving to the next sequence, looking at the iPhone X and the Xperia's image, you can see not only are they a little bit dull and a little bit lifeless in terms of colour, but you'll also lose a lot of detail in the sky. The Xperia really has the worst end of the deal here, you can barely make out anything in the clouds. What about stabilisation though? Flicking these over to 1080p video, you'll notice although the Xperia is the only phone here with no optical image stabilisation, that actually handles it surprisingly well and it's the iPhone X that is the most affected by me stepping. All these phones can also shoot slow motion video, but the S9, P20 Pro and XZ2 can do 960 frames per second, which is much slower than the other two phones that are limited to 240, but it can only be done for a short period of time. If anything, the Xperia wins this section, because whilst there are two other phones that can also shoot super slow motion video, the Sony is the only one that can do it at 1080p, so it does so while maintaining the best quality. Low light, and this is where we see a surprising divergence between these cameras. The Google Pixel 2, notably, even in this semi low light condition over here, has noticeable grain creeping in. Moving over to what I would consider as very low light, the iPhone starts to have problems. And whilst the Pixel 2 does have a bright looking image, you can tell this has been artificially enhanced because there's still a lot of noise. Ultra low light the kind of condition you'd find very rarely on a day-to-day -day basis. But in this situation, Samsung's dual aperture system really comes into its own. In low light, the aperture opens right up, so you actually get enough light to still be able to see clearly with very little noise. It's a clear winner here. And taking it a little bit further just for fun, in a lighting condition of about two lux, which to give you an idea you can't see with the human eye in, the S9 Plus still produces a reasonable image, and the P20 Pro is not far behind. So yeah, low light is a huge win for Samsung, but you have to always bear in mind how often you're going to be experiencing those kinds of lighting conditions. Not very often for most people. Something we haven't tried yet is just straight up photos, going out in broad daylight and just taking photos of things around you. And you can see immediately Huawei's image stands out. Upon recognizing the blue sky, the phone's artificial intelligence system boosts the saturation all the way to the max. And I think it'll be pretty dividing, you'll either love it or you'll hate it. But this next image demonstrates the problem, is that when it doesn't recognize these things, you're left with a flat looking image. And to have that level of inconsistency in one phone's camera, I'd say is not great. A couple of other takeaways here. The Xperia phone, again, has lost almost all detail in the sky. And I would say in these kinds of photos, just taking a simple shot of the landscape, the Pixel 2 is on top 80% of the time. Upon taking a photo with that phone, it'll make all sorts of adjustments to things like contrast, structure, sharpness, and the end image is often something you're instantly ready to post somewhere. I did also try taking a photo of this lamppost when the sun was directly behind it, which makes it a challenging subject to retain detail on, but surprisingly all five phones managed to keep the foreground clear. A quick note on shutter speed, which is essentially the amount of time that your image sensor is exposed to light while taking a photo. And the shorter this time is, the better you'll be able to capture fast moving objects without any blur. So what I did, I got right up close to a fountain. And with each of the five phones, we've taken one photo of fast moving water. And you can tell all of these phones have captured it very, very quickly. These almost look like stagnant bodies. But if we crop in six times, you'll notice Huawei's P20 Pro does the best job at capturing this very quickly. And Sony's Xperia does the worst. 
Aside from portrait mode, there is one other notable benefit with moving from a single camera to a dual camera, and that is zoom. And you might be thinking, well, wait a second, the Xperia XZ2 only has a single camera, the Google Pixel 2 only has one camera, and then we've got Huawei's P20 Pro over there with three, so how do these phones shape up? As with a lot of other things on this test, Huawei takes this one away. With three times optical zoom, it beats out the S9 Plus and the iPhone X, which both have two times, and the Pixel and Xperia, which have no zoom. And it's not a close competition, Huawei is way ahead of the game here. But again, as with super low lighting conditions, it's one of those things you've got to ask yourself, how much will you use it, and therefore is it a deal breaker? Selfies. For some people, something you've never taken in your life, and for others, the entire use of your phone's camera. So let's see how these stack up. You'll notice a very similar trend to what we saw with the portrait modes, whereby Samsung's S9 and Huawei's P20 try to make you look good. And pretty successfully, the iPhone X and Pixel 2 produce more grungy looking photos with a little bit more sharpness and contrast, and because they're not dialing the exposure all the way up, they also retain more detail in the background behind you. And it is totally up to you whether that's something you want. Whilst detail is lost in the background, in the foreground the P20 Pro actually has the most detail here. The front camera on this phone is 24 megapixels, and on the other end of the spectrum, Sony's has a 5 megapixel, and as you can tell, it does a pretty poor job in high dynamic range scenarios. The first four phones also have the option for selfie focus, which is basically portrait mode with the front camera only. And whilst it's possible you might prefer the way you look in the S9 and P20 Pro, the Google Pixel 2 is undoubtedly the only front camera here that looks as good as a rear camera. Now, something I'm a fan of is macro photography, going right up close to objects and seeing how much detail you can capture and how much you can separate the foreground from the background. We mentioned earlier Samsung's dual aperture system which shoots at f1.5 in dark, but then f2.4 in broad daylight, which means that compared to its rivals, you're actually getting less light into the sensor in broad daylight. And you also get less blur and less bokeh of the background, which I think doesn't look as good as, say, the Google Pixel or Huawei's P20 Pro. With a fixed aperture of f2.0, the Xperia phone also suffers a similar fate, but without the flexibility that Samsung's dual aperture system offers. But what about the most obvious question of detail? For which it would be easy to say, well, Huawei wins. Huawei has a 40 megapixel sensor on their phone. But you'll probably find you won't be taking 40 megapixel photos because photos take longer to capture. There's a huge space requirement and lack of zoom options. And the phone also uses something called pixel binning to take advantage of that 40 megapixel sensor when taking 10 megapixel photos. So yeah, it's not being wasted. And this actually leaves Sony's Xperia XZ2 as the highest resolution camera. You've got a 19 megapixel sensor there, and in a sense, even though it's been trailing throughout this entire test, that could be the ace up its sleeve. When we've zoomed in eight times, it is notably sharper than the other four phones, which seem to pretty much trade blows on a photo by photo basis. But on average, Google's Pixel 2 probably has the weakest level of detail here. Wow. So you may not have anticipated just how many factors there are to consider here. And unfortunately, I can't do the easy thing and tell you that one of these phones is the best outright. Samsung makes you look great on camera and kills the low light scene. The iPhone X is very balanced, and the Pixel 2 knocks it out of the park when it comes to scenic shots and front-facing portrait mode. Huawei's offering is a very forward-thinking camera with a lot of innovative, interesting features, and Sony has super slow-motion video that is the best of the bunch. But on balance is the only one I can safely say is not as good as the other four. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video and you found it useful, and if you did, if you could smash that subscribe button down below, that would really mean a lot to me. With that being said, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you guys next time.